take a look at question four. Uh, so we start off, we were told that it is the base induced hydrolysis so that we know uh, this is basically adding water uh, to this somehow and uh, probably it breaks it up. So the first thing we want to look at, as always, is where are we going to start when we push our arrows. Uh, as I've mentioned, when we have reactions that are done with things that are negatively charged, most often you're going to start pushing your arrow at a negative charge. So we're going to start here with the negative charge in the hydroxide. And we look at this, where can this thing react? There's really only two things that we might think about. Uh, since we've talked a lot about it, we should immediately be thinking about addition to the electrophilic carbon of the carbonyl group. The other thing I suppose might be to remove this proton, but if we think about that, this is not a particularly acidic proton, it's just an alcohol. So if we remove the proton, it wouldn't be that favorable because we'd end up with an alkoxide ion, which is going to be probably less stable than the hydroxide. So that's not going to be a favorable reaction. So uh, the only thing left to do then is to attack the carbonyl carbon. So we push our arrows and we form a bond between this oxygen atom and this carbonyl carbon. We know that when we do that, uh, we can no longer have a carbon-oxygen double bond because that would be five bonds to carbon. So we have to get rid of that and put our electrons up there. Now what does that look like? I'm just going to switch over and grab uh, products. You can already see what I've done. I've pre-done the reaction. There we go. Now the next thing we have to think about is, is are we finished? Well, not likely. We are used to nucleophilic acyl substitution and we want to think about uh, this reaction could go back uh, if we pushed our arrows and reformed our carbon-oxygen double bond and kicked off this hydroxide, but that gets us nowhere. So instead, let's kick off this other oxygen atom and see what that gets us. So we're going to reform our carbon-oxygen double bond. And when that happens, we have to break one of these bonds, and we're going to choose to break this bond. And that should give us this alkoxide here and a carboxylic acid. I'm going to bring all that in. There we go. So there's our carboxylic acid, and we might think we're done. We've, we've actually hydrolyzed, uh, looks like we've hydrolyzed our water, or our, our ester, but we have this negatively charged alkoxide anion. And uh, so we did the same thing. If we had it pulled off this proton, we would have had an alkoxide ion. So why is this a better option? We still have an alkoxide anion, but at the same time, we formed this carboxylic acid. So up until now, uh, this reaction was very much reversible. This could have kicked off that hydroxide uh, probably uh, even more easily than it could kick off that phenoxide. But once this thing forms, it has another pathway. It can't really go back because when these two meet, this is not going to attack the carbonyl carbon. There's a much more enthalpically favored reaction, and that is to pull off this proton in a simple acid-base reaction. This is a very favored reaction because this thing has a BKAA somewhere 4.5, uh, probably a little less than that because of this group. And if we protonate that, this alcohol would have a pKa of uh, 15 or 16. So we do that. 
and we end up forming this alcohol, benzoyl alcohol, and this carboxylate, and this actually will just sit there. It's very, very uh, thermodynamically favored for this last reaction here. And this will sit here until uh, we come back from lunch and decide to do something about it, and we will add we can make this reaction go back to the carboxylic acid. Now notice we had it but it didn't stay there. It just decarboxylated and formed this. What do we have to do? We just have to add some acid. We would probably add HCl, H2SO4, uh, aqueous solution of that. We'd want to add at least one equivalent of acid to protonate all of these carboxylates. So our final products then this doesn't get protonated any further there we go our final products and we reacted this with OH minus and ultimately an H plus we've added water.